Hi everyone, welcome again to the channel. Hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, today's video is probably something that you guys can't get away from in the last couple of days, and that is the explosive video that Cristiano Ronaldo has given to Piers Morgan. Um, I wanted to take you know a day or so just to reflect on it before um, giving an opinion, just to kind of let some of that dust settle, um, and just to see if there was anything further that came out rather than just sort of the snippets that we've seen so far. Uh, it looks like the interview is going to be aired over two nights on Talk TV. There's going to be um, a section of it tonight and there's going to be a section of it tomorrow. So some of the details may only become apparent once the full interview has been aired. But I think what is clear from the first couple of snippets that we have seen, Piers Morgan's doing a very good job at trying to drive that line of questioning, trying to lead Cristiano Ronaldo down a certain line of questioning to try and emphasise and maximise the gravitas of what is being discussed. We would expect a journalist to do that, of course. Um, and there's no smoke without fire. Um, by giving the interview, or as Piers Morgan says, requesting the interview, you know, Cristiano knew exactly what sort of line of questioning he was going to be asked. He knew what sort of answers he was probably going to have to divulge. So nothing will come as a surprise to him. But I think it also needs to be recognised that the, the line of questioning, the direction, the pace, the explosiveness, <coughs> potentially of some of the answers, is led by Piers Morgan. There's certainly some suggestibility going on there, especially when they talk on some of the topics like with Wayne Rooney and Gary Neville. Um, there does appear to be a couple of schools of thought about the interview uh, in itself. I think most people, whether they're casual onlookers, whether they are experts, whether they're ex-pundits uh, or just general fans, are probably of the opinion <clears throat> that whatever Cristiano was feeling, whatever opinion he has, he's gone about it in the wrong way. He's aired the dirty laundry in public. He's undermined his manager. He's undermined the club, who are his employers. He's undermined his teammates and all the colleagues that he works with behind the scenes, the playing and the non-playing staff, and that this is not the right way to go about it. And I think the consensus would be that Cristiano Ronaldo has crossed a line, that he's reached a point of no return, and that the club should do whatever they can to get rid of him, whether it's trying to flog him on the market, get rid of him when January comes along, see if there's any suitors and just sell him or potentially rip up the contract, some form of mutual termination and just get him out the door, cut their losses, get rid of a, of a rotten egg, of a bad apple, a bad influence and just get him out the football club. That would be the first school of thought. Now, there's another school of thought where some people have sympathy for Cristiano Ronaldo. Some people think that maybe given his stature, given the fact he's arguably the most recognisable, marketable, high-profile player that United have, that perhaps United need to uh, appease him somewhat, that United need to raise their levels up to what he has expected over the last 20 years, bearing in mind that when he came to Manchester United, the level and the standards that were set from the manager and the senior playing staff. They were regularly competing for all the major trophies. Mm. Then he goes to Real Madrid. They are regularly competing for La Liga and Champions League. Then he goes to um, Juventus. They're regularly competing for the Scudetto, Coppa Italias, latter rounds of, uh, of the Champions League. He's used to a certain standard of success, a certain standard and expectation and he potentially feels that Manchester United aren't there. So the second school of thought is he's been let down by the football club. And that seems to be the sort of the two overarching schools of thought. Whatever your opinion, it does appear to be that this is a mechanism that has been put in place by Cristiano Ronaldo to get what he wants. And what that would appear to be is getting out of Manchester United. Now, we know in the summer, it's probably the world's worst kept secret that Ronaldo told the club he wanted to leave and he was proactively trying to find a suitor. His agent, George Mendes, was going all around Europe, Bayern Munich, the Italian giants, tapping up some of the Spanish clubs, 
to see if there were any suitors for Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, at the time, United didn't want to sell him, so there would have been a transfer fee involved. Obviously, his wages are huge. It's widely reported that he's earning in excess of half a million a week at Manchester United. So £500,000, you're talking 550, 600,000 euros a week. That's huge money that very, very few clubs, if none, could realistically afford in the post-COVID world. So there were no suitors. There, were, there was no realistic offer on the table, according to Manchester United. So there was no way for him to leave the club in the summer. Now, the understanding is that Cristiano Ronaldo put in that request to leave uh, before the end of the season. So whilst Ralph Ranić was manager, one of, of course, the many grievances that he's aired so far is he was dissatisfied with Ralph's appointment in the first place. So even before Eric Ten Hag came to the football club, he had expressed a wish to leave. Even after Eric Ten Hag comes to the football club, he seemed uh, unrelenting in his desire to leave. So this has been something that's been harbouring for a long time, and it's something which overshadowed Ten Hag's first uh, initial period as manager of the football club. It was that issue which just didn't seem to go away. It looked like potentially that they'd come to some form of truce. And then, of course, we saw the issue which surfaced with the Manchester derby, where losing the game, potentially looking to chase a goal, Eric Ten Hag did not turn to Cristiano Ronaldo to try and get back into the game. And the reasoning for that, allegedly, was so that he would not disrespect the player. Yet a couple of weeks later, in a position of strength, where potentially he didn't need to put a striker on the pitch, winning 2-0 against Tottenham in the dying embers, he did ask for Cristiano, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to come on, and Ronaldo refused to come on as a, su as a sub. Something which, privately, according to reports, Ronaldo admits was not the correct behaviour to do. But nevertheless, public contempt, public lack of respect, it showed that the situation was fraught already back then. Now, the timing of the interview is interesting. Obviously, these are the last embers of the season before the mid-season break for the World Cup. Transfer window will be upon us almost immediately once the World Cup is finished. Um, and the timing couldn't really have been any worse for Manchester United. There does appear to have been an element of solidarity and strength in the main, um, in the Manchester United squad. The Aston Villa game, of course, put to one side for one second. Generally, United's performances have been better. Generally, they have been more consistent. And the squad does, have to, does appear to have more harmony and unity. There seems to be more promising thoughts about a generation of young players that might make uh, the step up. One of which, of course, is Alejandro Garnacho. Check out the other video where I talk about him potentially being football's next wonder kid. He looks like he might be the next heir to the throne or the young pretender, the next starlet in the Manchester United team. Whereas Ronaldo's at the other end of the spectrum. He's the veteran who potentially doesn't have that much time left at the very highest level. Now, United played away at Fulham at the weekend. Ronaldo was told midweek that he wouldn't be in the starting eleven, but he was expected to be part of the main squad. Ronaldo then told Manchester United, apparently, that he was ill. He was unwell, couldn't travel with them, couldn't play in the game. Yet at the same time, a very healthy and well-looking Ronaldo gives an interview to Piers Morgan. So the excuse that's been given and the timing of the interview really couldn't have been much worse. So it doesn't look great for Cristiano in that regard. And again, it looks like that this is a, a final roll of the dice by him <coughs> to try and get his move out of Manchester United. Now, going back to the two schools of thought arguments that I spoke about a little while ago, most people would say that United need to cut their cloth. You can't have somebody who's going to undermine the football club in this kind of manner, and he shouldn't be welcome at all to the training ground. They should look to get rid of him by any means possible, as quickly as possible. Now, this has happened before. Um, in 2005, Roy Keane gave an interview to the club's TV channel, MUTV, where he threw, again, the popular opinion is he threw some of his players under the bus. So Alex Ferguson, manager at the time, was so angry about his conduct that he and the club agreed that they were going to get rid of Roy Keane, the club captain, the club legend, Ferguson's embodiment on the pitch at the time. 
They called Keane into Sir Alex's office and they mutually terminated his contract then and there. Obviously, there's two sides to that. Roy Keane's probably got a slightly different recollection to that. But there was a line that the club and Sir Alex felt that Roy had crossed. It was a point of no return. And doesn't matter who you are, no one's bigger than the football club. You don't air your dirty laundry in public. There are certain things that you keep behind closed doors and you sort out in the dressing room. It looks like Cristiano has done something similar here. And so the consensus is, whether he's right or wrong whether he has a valid grievance or not, you can't do what he's done, and United need to get rid. Now, if you listen to radio stations like Talk Sport or other media outlets, those have been in the game, some of them have got a slightly more sympathetic view towards Cristiano Ronaldo. And Graham Souness, ex-Liverpool player, ex-Liverpool manager, he was of a slightly different opinion, that when you've got a superstar like Cristiano Ronaldo, who is an elite elite player both in terms of performance leadership um, what he could potentially impart to the younger players the marketability and arguably your biggest asset at the football club certainly commercially speaking he felt that for a player to have done what he's done in this particular manner he must feel particularly aggrieved this is a very emotional um, way of trying to go about getting a transfer so Graham thinks that potentially some form of conversation took place, probably between player and manager, where the manager may have said, you're going to get minutes, you're going to be my starter, or some sort of agreement or promise was made, which has now been renegated on. Now, is there an element of truth in that? Maybe. It would probably be bad management, in most people's opinion, to take what's already a combustible situation, feed what you know to be untrue to kind of try and keep somebody on side knowing that down the line you're going to break that promise and it's only going to flare up in your face later in the season seems a bit of an odd one one of the one of the potential arguments in that line of thinking might go back to when Ronaldo joined United in the first place so if you go back to the end of the transfer window August 2021 when it looked like Ronaldo might go to Manchester City United stepped in at the last minute. They were desperate for him not to go to City, desperate for a marquee signing to go alongside Jadon Sancho and Rafa Varane, desperate for somebody who was bankable and marketable and world-class who could potentially lead some of the younger players, grab the team by the scruff of the neck. Oli obviously sanctioned it. Ed Woodward, who was still involved at the time, sanctioned it. And very, very quickly, United managed to get Ronaldo through the door. Was there some form of contractual clause put in, which is not unusual for a player to determine um, a certain number of minutes, a certain number of games. If it's a key game, he is a starter. Some sort of clause along those lines. Or was there a gentleman's agreement? Maybe not put down in writing, but maybe some form of agreement that was reached along those sort of lines. Have the club renegated on that? Now that you've got Richard Arnold and John Murtagh, obviously Eric Ten Hag as well, that behind the scenes team has changed completely. Maybe whatever was written in that contract or whatever they shook hands on, maybe the club are renegading on that. Maybe that's why he feels aggrieved. Um, maybe there were certain promises made about the facilities or how they were going to do some of the background prep or rest and recuperation facilities. He was talking about the pool. He was talking about the gym. He was talking about the catering. It's no secret, in fact, it's probably some of the worst kept secrets that most clubs are investing in their infrastructure now. You've got Leicester and Tottenham and Liverpool and City all putting money into their training grounds. All of them have probably got better training grounds than Manchester United now. Most of them have probably also got better stadiums which are maintained better and don't leak through the roofs. So there is probably some truth in some of the things that he's saying. And somebody of that nature who has been brought in to get the club to a certain level, who is used to operating at a certain level, who remembers the club when it was David Gill and Sir Alex Ferguson running the show. And the club is a shadow of its former self, of course. Perhaps the circumstance for him has led him to feel he's got to the point where he can't continue. Maybe promises were made or United are actually worse than he thought. But it comes down to, is this the right or the wrong way to go about it? So the club is now faced with a potential problem. What do they do? 
the likelihood is they're going to they're going to get rid. Such a public display of insubordination is something that somebody like Eric Ten Hag will not stomach. He's got a certain a certain Guardiola, a certain Alex Ferguson element to him. Doesn't matter about stylistically if you agree with how he wants to play football. He's very bloody minded. He's absolutely laser focused in how he wants to go and achieve things. I can't see him accepting Ronaldo coming back into the squad at all. The likelihood is Ronaldo is going to leave Manchester United. The question is how? The club are going to have to take a financial hit whatever they do. If they sell him, it's going to be at an almost zero transfer fee. They might have to put some sort of money in their pocket to help subsidise some wages for a period of time. If they go for a mutual termination of the contract, that is potentially a huge PR disaster that they're going to have to navigate their way through. So it's a really interesting situation. It's a really unfortunate situation because when he returned to the club, there was a huge romantic and nostalgic feel. This was not like when Henri went back to Arsenal or when other players have gone back to a football club. Ronaldo was still operating at a very high level for Juventus. Even last year in a struggling team, he still scored 24 goals. Um, it showed that in the right circumstance where he is the focal point, he can operate to a very, very high level. They don't really have anyone who's going to potentially score that number of goals against mediocre, middle and high-class opposition regularly. They don't have anyone who's got that driven mindset, who has that experience of having been there and done it and won major trophies. So it's going to be a loss-loss situation for Manchester United, whatever they do. They're going to lose potentially an iconic player, a potential leader in the dressing room, a commercial asset, a marketable asset. It's, it's unfortunate that this is the situation it's gone to, that the relationship is broken down. This young starlet who came to the club post-David Beckham grew to arguably be the best player in the world at the time. He was a world record transfer for them at the time. He came back to such you know fanfare <clears throat> and for it to have nosedived, fairly quickly he didn't even get through one season before the reports were coming out that he wanted to leave and it looks like it's deteriorated further since then so it is a shame it will be a loss to the premier league it will certainly be a loss to manchester united um i'd be love to know what you guys have to think about it about are you in the camp where he's completely out of order or do you have sympathy for him i also think it's important that we need to just sit back and wait for this interview to come out in full we need to get the full relevance and rationale um, behind it. Um, and we need to know a little bit more about the background. We also need to know about what Manchester United are going to publicly say. They came out with a statement yesterday saying that they were aware, saying that they were going to make a statement when it was appropriate. And they are taking legal advice on their position now. So we need to wait and see what Manchester United come out and say publicly. We need to... Um, see whether they go down the legal route, whether they act quickly and decisively, or whether this is a saga that's going to drag out through the World Cup. Um, again, leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think about the situation. But looking at the way that United dealt with it before with Roy Keane, looking from the outside at Eric Ten Hag's character, the way his makeup, I can't see a way back for Cristiano Ronaldo. Um... At Manchester United if you or I were in this situation and we had an employment contract or something similar we'd be told to clear our desks the next day we'd possibly even end up in court for breach of contract or something along those lines let's hope it doesn't go down that route let's hope it doesn't go nasty but it does appear like this is going to be a parting of the ways so we continue to watch this space and see what the next few days have to bring um, obviously at the weekend the World Cup starts anyway, so Ronaldo is not going to be anywhere to be seen in Manchester for the foreseeable future anyway. Uh, likelihood is he's going to leave, but again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll catch you guys very soon.